before you ever start monkeying with the bridge or anything. What did I do? Oh, I think it's the original case. Oh my god, it smells. Oh, broken handle, cool. What did I buy? Why did I buy this? Oh my god, everything's falling apart. Oh my god. The case is definitely not. You wouldn't want to gig with this case. Oh. Oh my god. Heyo. Definitely gonna need a few new strings. Oh my God, is it in one piece? Oh, oh my God, there's so much dust inside. <laughs> As a disclaimer, I've never worked with an instrument this old before and I'm not gonna do anything special. I don't know how old the strings are. The advert said that they are, uh, they've been left. So the guitar shop I bought it from acquired this as it was and then they've just sold it on to me. So I'm scared because the bridge moves. I'm scared about everything. I can't get it to anyone at the moment. So I just thought whilst I restring it, you'll join me on this journey of discovery. 1936 Epiphone. Okay, I am gonna begin by reading a little bit of the history from Epiphone's website. So what I found out is that Epiphone was founded in 1873 it was a family-run business, but it was 1928 that the Epiphone Banjo Company were making banjos for Selma Con and the Continental Music line of stores, a major distributor of instruments. And in 1928, uh, also introduced the first line of acoustic guitars to compete with the company that Epi determined. Epi is, is the, the son of the founder, I think. Epaminodas. Epaminodas, determined uh, to compete with Epiphone's greatest rival, Gibson. I want to say this is the introduction, is one of the introduction, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, of the master-built line of guitars, feature because it was featured... They featured seven carved top F-hole style arch tops ranging in price from $35 to $275. And before that, they had the recording series of acoustic guitars. Interesting, the instruments combined spruce and laminated maple and were available as an arch top or flat top. So this is a 1936 instrument. 1936, pre-World War II. Yes, so if I look inside, this Epiphone master-built instrument, Olympic, number uh, 11717. I don't know whether that helps anyone. I would try and film in there, but I'm not sure it's gonna come out on camera properly. It's so dusty. So I'm gonna slowly, I'm gonna be really, really careful, and I'm gonna restring it one string, one string at a time because I don't want to, I don't want to take everything off and then be left with this wobbly bridge. I want everything just to stay as it is. So I'll just like clean gently underneath it. And yeah, I mean, there is, there is this whole history that I don't know enough about. And if anyone can, I would love to learn more. Please write in the comments below. I'm, so early on into my guitar collecting journey. Oh, that sound is going to be horrid. Whew. 
oh, that is a filthy string. I've always been so intrigued and yet I've never really like taken the leap to discover for myself because I never worked in a guitar shop as a teenager. So now I'm giving myself the opportunity to spend time alone with <laughs> instruments and discover for myself and make mistakes and ask questions and uh, get people's help and ask the internet. Um, but I totally understand that there are quite a lot of guitarists out there who just aren't interested in gear. But I am. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, I am recording our conversation. Please do not swear. <laughs> okay. I have bought a 1936 Epiphone acoustic guitar. It's got very old strings on it. The bridge is not fixed. It's very dusty. Do you have any advice? Yeah, so um, if there are any luthiers open... There aren't any luthiers buy... open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, does it have a truss rod? Oh, so... no, no. So, no. Okay. Well, <laughs> so one thing I would do is kind of eye the neck um, mm. to see if, if the neck has relief or, or if it has a twist. And you can kind of see if it's um, like a ski slope or if it's straight or if it had any sort of twist or anything to it. So you can kind of do that to see what the status of the neck is because some of those little guitars didn't have truss rods. So you're just kind of hoping that... The wood itself is going to stay straight and true for, you know, all time, which is not often the case. I was just going to take off one string at a time and just change. So like leaving everything in place as much as I can and then sure. just restring it one by one um, right. and just see whether I can just even get it playable. So I'm like, I'm, not, I'm just cleaning it with a dry cloth. So far as restringing it, you can definitely do it one string at a time, but chances are that bridge is not going to be in the dead right spot. Right. And if you want to adjust that, how you do that is the distance from the nut to the 12th fret is the same distance from the 12th fret to the bridge. So you can measure that, and that will help you get the intonation correct and the scale oh. length feeling right. Cool. Okay, I will do that, and then I will let you know how I go. I'll send you a few photos now. Thanks for the yeah. call. And, okay, good to, good to know. Good to know. Okay, I have a bit more confidence. I spoke to my friend Zach of Mythos Pedals, and he scared me at first. But I think if I just move slowly, calmly, make the calmest video I've ever made, um, and just change strings one by one, we will be able to get it up and running to a certain extent. These are the strings I use on all my other guitars. Obviously not sponsored, but they're custom light 11s. Old strings versus new strings. <laughs> This is a rare find. I've restrung it. Just in terms of action, I know that it, I don't think it was touched by the guitar shop that acquired it. And it's just in such great condition. I'm, I mean, obviously it looks aesthetically beaten up, but that adds to it. It's got some binding missing. I can deal with some binding missing. I'm in love. It's it's not easy to play. And 
and it's quite quiet so it's it's definitely a vibe guitar it's not it wouldn't be my main guitar it would not replace my martins and for the majority of guitarists you know that this is just it's another sound to the repertoire but um to anyone who doesn't play guitar and wants to learn more it's kind of like you just they're all different tools and this is a different tool for me i haven't had something that sounds like this before and so it's it's just a a real a real pleasure And, and in the room, it sounds like it's got reverb on it. It's just... Oh. I think I want to make a whole EP on this. very chuffed with my rather spontaneous purchase. I think it just has such a vibe to it and I'm excited to be its caretaker from now on and in only in only a few years, <laughs> um, maybe a few more than a few years, it will be it will be a century old and I want it in my possession when it turns a hundred and I just think it's gonna it's gonna be really fun to explore in songs and I've got so many ideas yeah I just want to thank you for taking this journey with me unboxing discovering something I was very prepared for it to be the opposite of what it turned out to be I expected by putting strings on it to pull off um, the saddle or something to snap and explode and there's always time for that but um, just taking it slowly and calmly seeking some professional advice although I couldn't take it to a luthier myself but turns out it didn't really need it I I am pretty okay with um, restringing guitars after all these years and yeah it was just really enjoyable experience please let me know if you know anything about the Epiphone Olympic in the comments below. 1936 is the year that I was told 
by the reverb seller. <sighs> so anyway, it is time to end on Patreon of the day. So let's get to it. I have my trusty random number generator from Google. Generate. 291. Seamus Nagiote, you are my patron of the day. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and comment below with your thoughts. But otherwise, I'll be seeing you very soon.